In this lesson, 2.4.a, we will go back over how to find the domain and range of a graph, specifically of an absolute value function. So we'll just do a couple of examples, and this will be a short lesson. Um, let's look at our objectives. We are going to identify the domain and range of an absolute value function. Now, this is not an absolute value function, but I just wanted to refresh your memory about domain. Domain is all the possible x values that this function may have and range is all the possible y values. So in this particular function, if we had a point here at this end, right here, and we had an ending point here, our domain would go, would range from this point all the way over to this point. That would be our domain. Our range would have an interval of from this point all the way up to the highest point up here, this maximum point up here, that would be our range. Okay, and we can express domain and range using either interval notation or algebraic notation using inequalities. So let's try our first example. Here we have an absolute value equation, and if you'll notice, it has been shifted to the right two, and you can see the equation up there. So if we're going to write domain, our domain, remember, is all the x values that this function will have. Well, the x values are going to go from the negative or from the positive 2 to the left indefinitely because this is not an endpoint. This is always assumed to be an arrow. It's a line and it goes on forever. Same thing with the right side. So from 2 on to the right, it's going to carry on forever. So our domain is going to range from the far left, which remember we classified that as negative infinity all the way to the far right, which we classify as positive infinity. So we write our domain in interval notation as negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we used algebraic notation, well, we're talking about domain, so that's the x value. <clears throat> and the x value is going to be greater than negative infinity and less than positive infinity. So it's going to range from negative to positive infinity. Now let's move to the range. Our range then is our y values. So if we look at the smallest value in this graph right here, this point right here is 2 comma 0. Remember we're looking at the y values. So our y value is 0 right here. Will this function ever drop below 0? It will never. So the lowest y value we have is going to be 0, and we do have a, a value of 0, so we would need to use the brackets. Okay, remember to use brackets when you include that value. And then where does the y value go as far as going up? Well, these lines on the right and left will continue up indefinitely, so they'll continue on up to positive infinity at some point in the future. So our range goes from 0 all the way to positive infinity, and we always use a parentheses when we're dealing with infinity. Okay, great. Let's look at our second example. Our domain here is going to be the same exact thing. If you'll notice, these are lines. They are presumed to go on forever unless we could see an endpoint. So this line is going to continue to the left forever, and this line is going to continue to the right forever. So our domain is the same as before. It's negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, if we'd use interval notation, we would say x is less than infinity and greater than negative infinity. And let's actually do our range, and then we'll go back and include our, our algebraic notation for range as well. So our range, notice our point is down here, and we'll write the coordinates of the point. It's 0, comma, negative 2. Okay, and you can see the equation right here. We shifted down 2. That's the negative 2 on the end. So our range is going to be starting here at negative 2, but then continue up forever towards positive infinity. So our range, again, we include the negative 2 because the function actually does rest at 0, negative 2. So we have negative 2 to positive infinity is our range. Okay, so let's go back and do some interval notation. We're dealing with our y, y values, and our y values include the 0 
but are greater than them as well. So y is going to be greater than or equal to zero and less than infinity. In this case, our y is going to be greater than or equal to negative two and less than infinity. Okay, and that's the interval notation if you prefer that. Let's do our final two examples. In these examples, we have a reflection. Notice that our graph is pointing down. Okay, so that will change a little bit what our domain and range look like. So let's actually first do our domain. And, and you'll start to see a pattern that since these are linear lines, this one on the left will go to the left forever and the one on the right will also go to the right forever. So our domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, an interval notation. And it will go from negative infinity on the left to positive infinity on the right. If we look at our range, our range starts here at 1, 2, negative 2. Well, actually, negative 1, negative 2. So this point is negative 1, comma, negative 2. But all we really care about is the negative 2 because that's where our range starts. It starts at negative 2, and then it drops down this way instead of going up. So we are heading towards negative infinity. These lines are heading down forever. So our range in interval notation We always go smallest to largest, so we would start with the negative infinity. And it goes all the way up to negative t and 2, and it does include the negative 2. So we just switched how we wrote this because now the graph has reflected, it's flipped down, it's opening down. If we look at our interval notation, y would then be less than or equal to negative 2 on this side and greater than negative infinity on this side. Okay, final example. Let's look at our domain. Again, our domain is going to stay the same. Our graph, these lines, are heading to the left. And if we let them run forever, we continue to the left forever. It would never change. So our domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation x is going to be greater than negative infinity but less than positive infinity. Now let's examine our range. So we need to know the coordinates of this point right here because from this point up we don't have any more function. From this point down we do. So it looks like, yeah, and it's kind of hard to tell, but perhaps we'll just say this is a 3. So our point here is negative 2 comma 3. And again we're looking at the 3 because we're looking at our y values for range. So our range in interval notation from smallest to largest goes all the way down to negative infinity because these lines as they go left they're also going down as this one goes to the right it's also going down. So it goes from negative infinity all the way up here to positive 3 and positive 3 is included in our function because we have a point right there. If we look at our interval notation y is going to be less than or equal to positive 3 and greater than negative infinity. And just try to remember that infinity is not an actual number, it's just a direction. And those conclude our examples, and you will now go to the practice assignment and try some on your own.